Okay, hello. Um, we've reached the end. Uh, this will be the uh, final section test due December 13th at 11.55 p.m. That's five minutes to midnight. Um, by now you should be really used to this, so I'm not going to bother um, going through the boilerplate. Um, it, this, is, this is all course policy you're used to, missed assignment policy. Um, uh, with regard to the due date from this, uh, for this one, I need to have these grades turned around very quickly, uh, so uh, I can't do much in the way of extensions on this because the Office of the Registrar needs your grade from me uh, within 48 hours of your submission. So um, that's a thing. Um, uh, assignment submission. Uh, make sure I've got it. Make sure it's the right file. Make sure because this is it. Really, it's your name. It's you um, that you are. You are saying this here is my work, right? When you submit an assignment, so make sure I've got it. Make sure it's the right file. It's your responsibility, um, and uh, don't plagiarize. Uh, it's by now you should be familiar with these. Uh, these policies. Um, so, readings, uh, Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil, it's just preface chapters one and two, and uh, Sartre's Existentialism and Human Emotions. Um, if you don't have this book, I posted a PDF of this book, so um, you've got this book. Uh, we're just reading to the uh, page 51 um, that ends a particular section there. Um, all of the video material is required. I assume that you've screened it, um, so screen it and that sort of thing. Uh, two paragraphs minimum uh, for these responses, uh, full sentences, five points each, total 30 points. So fairly standard. Uh, before I start, uh, the forums also close on December 13th at 11.55 p.m. Do those forums. That's 10% of your final grade. Uh, you don't want to be sitting at a B and wind up with a C because you didn't do the forums. Um, if you're sitting at a C and you haven't done the forums, that's a good way to turn a C into a B. So um, yeah, it's a full letter grade is what the forums are worth. So do them, engage with them. Uh, you have till five minutes to midnight on December 13th. So um, six questions, uh, that's three on Nietzsche um, and three on uh, Jean-Paul Sartre. Uh, so um, they read, first off, um, it, Nietzsche had several points throughout uh, the sections of uh, Beyond Good and Evil that we've looked at, refers to perspectivity, calling it on page four, the fundamental condition of all life. Roderick, in the video posted to Moodle, defends this position, claiming that it is um, not a form of relativism. If then it's not a form of relativism, what is perspectivity? Right. So um, basically what I need you to do is engage with perspectivity, that perspectivism kind of, uh, kind of question uh, that I've, I think I've gone over sufficiently and you've got the Roderick resources as well. Um, I mention it in my video, so um, you should have lots there. Um, it's, it's an important aspect of Nietzsche's position, so we should engage with that. Question number two on Nietzsche, uh, Nietzsche claims, quote, we do not object to a judgment just because it's false. That's probably what's strangest about our new language. Uh, it's Beyond Good and Evil, page seven. Uh, what basis for judgment does Nietzsche suggest in the pace, uh, place of a true and false analysis? All right. Um, so I've given you the page reference. I've given you the reference for this, um, let's see. Do, 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 do. That's page seven. Uh, that is section four. Um, the question is rather to what extent uh, judgment that furthers life, preserves life, preserves the species, perhaps even cultivates the species. Da 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 da. Right. Um, this is a question related to the entire tenor of the kind of critique uh, that Nietzsche is giving. Um, with regard to our moral beliefs and our moral values. Right? So it's important to engage with. Um, remember when I introduced this, I was, I, I was pointing out that in sort of a post-truth post era, um, this, this is actually an interesting basis for critique. It's like, fine, if we don't care about truth, what do we care? So anyhow. Um, that is uh, Nietzsche's uh, second question. 
Now, third question. Believe it or not, I didn't even ask you questions about Section 2 and Beyond Good and Evil. Um, in Section 19 of Beyond Good and Evil, Nietzsche claims that the act of willing, as discussed in terms of the supposedly simple concept of the free will, is, quote, something complicated, something that has unity only as a word. Right? That's, that's page 18. Um, Nietzsche then lays out a four-part treatment of the will, discussed this treatment, examining all four parts in uh, terms of Nietzsche's criticism of the free will. Um, note also for this question that in section 21 of Beyond Good and Evil, um, it, he, he furthers this critique, so it's not done in section 19. Uh, but it, boo, 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 boo. Here it is on your page 21, section 21. It's funny how often that happens. Uh, middle of the page, I would ask him to take his enlightenment a step further and likewise eliminate from his head the opposite non uh, of the non-concept of free will. I mean, the unfree will, which amounts to a misuse of cause and effect. Right um, towards the bottom of the page, uh, we're, we alone are the ones who have invented causes, succession, reciprocity, uh, relativity, coercion, number, law, freedom, reason, purpose, and if we project, uh, if we mix this world of signs into uh, things uh, as if it were an in itself, we act once more as we've always done, that is, mythologically. The unfree will is mythology. In real life, it's only a matter of strong and weak wills. Now, um, remember when I was presenting this, um, I related it to Kant's concept of autonomy. Uh, this criticism goes a lot further than that of the self-love moralists. Um, it actually talks about the kind of rational autonomy just not being mixed with desires or something along those lines. Uh, the kind of autonomy that Kant is talking about is uh, impossible from a Nietzschean standpoint. Right? Really what he's establishing here is a notion of agency. Right? So. Um, in your discussion, you might bring some of that in uh, as well. So that's Nietzsche. Um, Sartre, on page 13, this is question number four, does existentialism and human emotions, discussing the basic principles of existentialism claims, quote, what they, and this is me adding in here, uh, the positions of all the various articulations of existential philosophy, have in common, what all of those articulations have in common is that they think that existence precedes essence, or if you prefer that subjectivity must be the starting point. What does Sartre mean by this? Um, I'm in a funny position with regard to evaluating your understanding of Sartre. Um, here's the thing. if If you don't have a basic understanding of what's meant by existence precedes essence, I I can't say, it, it, I, I can't see asserting that you know what the heck existentialism is. So this is a pretty fundamental question that I'm asking you here. Um, his, <coughs> his articulation is actually pretty good. This goes over to basically page 16, um, and he expands it later on in the argument, um, talking about subjectivity being the starting point. Um, there are basically two reasons why he points out that subjectivity must be the starting point. One has to do with it's the only sure and certain starting point. This has to do with Descartes. I wouldn't have you engage with that. And the other one has to do with dignity, right? Um, this is a position that doesn't treat human beings like objects, right? Like mechanisms of some sort, right? Subjectivity being the starting point points out that, you know, we have a special dignity as, as free choosing beings, right? Which is not to say necessarily rational beings, but nonetheless free and choosing beings, right? This is the interesting thing about Sartre's uh, existentialism. Uh, in a lot of ways, it lines up with Kant, right? But in a lot of ways, it's distinct from Kant because it's decisively not based on the exercise of reason, right? Um, so it's it's it, the fancy term is ontological. It stems straight from our being as beings, right? Um, we're free, right? And there's no wiggling out of that freedom, 
Right? So anyhow, existence precedes essence. Right? Explain what it means. Now, question number five, we're almost done here. Um, on page 18 of Existentialism and Human Emotion, Sartre, in order to make, it, uh, uh, make clear the relatedness of freedom and responsibility, asserts, quote, in choosing myself, I choose man, or mankind, or humankind, however you want to translate this. Uh, what does Sartre mean by this claim? All right, so unpack the claim, in choosing myself, I choose mankind. Um, and what does this claim have to do with anguish or anxiety? Discussed from page 18 to 24 or 21. All right. Um, so that's five points as well. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, I gave you a lot discussing anguish or anxiety or angst, right? Um, depending on how you want to. Um, this is this is that fundamental tension between freedom and responsibility, and um, it, 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 and Sartre wants to argue that it goes much further, much deeper, right, than just individualistic kind of responsibility. If existence really precedes essence, you see how question four is playing into question five then effectively what we're do is doing with each of our choices and each of our actions is defining what it means to be a human being. If existence precedes essence, essentially we are establishing the essence of human, right? And you should, you should feel a little anxious, right? Now finally, um, I, I spent some time in my video on this. Um, I quite like this argument. On page 41 of Existentialism and Human Emotion, Start addresses the objection, you're able to do anything, no matter what, which amounts to a criticism uh, of this position that there are no a priori values. To expand that criticism, um, effectively, this criticism holds that existentialism, insofar as there aren't values out there in the world, right? is really just being arbitrary with the kind of value that it asserts, right? Um, uh, now, your task is to discuss how Sartre, in responding to this criticism, compares ethics to art, right? So, what are we up to in ethics, right? When we make choices and establish values and meaning in our lives, that's similar to what uh, Picasso does when he painted a canvas or something along those lines, right? So, um, that is your test. Uh, so, it's like I say, six questions, two paragraphs each. Um, if you have questions about the questions, uh, please contact me. Um, I have one batch of office hours on Thursday left, uh, so I I frankly expect to line up out the door, uh, so come see me um, if you like then, uh, and otherwise email me and we will sort out uh, your understanding of this material. Uh, use your time as well. Um, you've got from today all the way to the 13th, so that is like nine days, right? six questions. That's, what, a day and a half per question. Um, so. Uh, use that time, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. All right. Well, um, it's been an interesting semester. Uh, I wish you well, and um, I look forward to reading your final responses. Oh, one last thing. Um, your grades for the forum discussions uh, will be um, calculated in with your final grade that I pass on to the Office of the Registrar. Uh, there's going to be nothing on Moodle that tells you how you did on those, uh, but nonetheless, um, provided you've been, you know, active in these forums and engaging in a substantial kind of reflective kind of way uh, with them, it, you should be just fine. Um, it, now, if you're waiting till the last minute to do them all, I... I I said at the beginning of the semester that I noticed that, and that has a bearing on my calculation, but nonetheless, you get some credit for still doing these forums. Um, the Sartre and Nietzsche forums are still fairly fresh, active, so, you know, go to it. Um, the earlier forums, you still get some credit for responding to them now, though, you know, it, the task was to be timely with these forums. So, um, that's what we are talking about. Anyhow, thank you for the semester, and have good days, one for each of you. Cheers.